Hey guys, and in this video, I'm going to give you my wish list for a next generation iPhone. Now, there's been a lot of hype about this, uh, and really going, going back since before the last iPhone got announced. A lot of people thought it was going to be the Apple Vive and a radical redesign as opposed to what it actually was the iPhone 4S. So, we thought it was going to be the iPhone 5, but that didn't materialise last year, so we're, we're moving the big, the big um, refresh in our minds for this year. So, I'm not necessarily going to talk about the rumours, I'm just going to talk about what I want, not necessarily what I think will happen, but just what I want. Um, so that's what we're going to go into. The first thing I should mention is, it's probably not going to be called the next, uh, the iPhone 6 in this case, because technically iPhone 4S iPhone 4S was the iPhone 5, so if they were going to number it, would number it the iPhone 6, but I, I doubt they will number it, it's in a, so just called it the new iPad and, and the new Mac Pro, so I think it will just go by the name of, of the new iPhone, not necessarily any, any version number. So, w with that out of the way, I'm, I'm just going to give you my thoughts on what would be nice, in my my personal opinion, to have it in a uh, few future iPhone and you can post your comments down below as well. Once again, not all of these are rumours. Some of them are. Oh, but mostly this is just what I would want in the next generation iPhone. So, w with that said, let's dive in. The first thing I would want is some kind of NFC, NFC radio. Now, I talked about this months and months and months ago, maybe maybe even a year or so, I did a dedicated video on this. NFC is something called Near Field Communications. And what it does is, it allows you to tap your phone against an object, and for that object to transmit information. So, the, the, the idea for this is, a lot of phones already have NFC going back to the Nexus S, lots of HTC phones. So th this is not new, but th there's been an idea go going on for a, a while, and I think it's popular in Japan that we we could use our phones because everyone has code the phones everywhere as a payment method. So you could go up to the checkout and instead of instead of paying cash or, or your credit card, you could just pull out your phone with all your financial details here. Just um, swipe it at the checkout, and you would you would be charged to your phone. Now, the, that 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 service or, already exists. Like I was saying, NFC near field communications radios or, or, already exist, and um, and so does so does the the infrastructure to pay for the things using it. There's something called Google Wallet, which comes on new, newer generation Android devices, but 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 it has it hasn't taken off yet, and the main reason for that is because hardly any retailers have adopted it, and they're, they're basically a bit intimidated. But I think the reason why I think we could see it in an iPhone is we all know Apple has a lot of muscle. Because they're a very popular country, company, so, so they have a lot of power to kind of put forward change and uh, in, introduce new te new technologies. And because because of their history of doing that, they would perhaps be the better place to do that than Google. Apple is generally thought of as a very commercial company, whereas Google just puts out free products and based on our advertising. Android is certainly an example of that. Android is an open source platform and developers take it and, and use it on their own devices. So that's why I think Google Wallet hasn't taken off very much. Um, companies that are being e-commerce companies and commerce companies and vendors don't don't really see Google as a uh, a, v a vendor that they can put the trust in financially. But with Apple, we 
we saw them as a, as they put it revolutionize the music industry in and with iTunes there are a few music downloads services before them but, but none with the mass kind of popularity as iTunes and I think they could they could bring that about for for my mobile payment so that's that's certainly my first one. I think we gotta have an NFC radio in the the the, F, the next iPhone, but bring along some kind of mobile payment app to go with it. And I think I'm just gonna go on the record as saying I think for that to be successful, when Apple announced the next iPhone, they need to also announce uh, um, a lot of partnerships with with a lot of. Uh, reputable stores in in which the N the NFC radio can be used. Okay, let's move on to the next thing. Uh, there's been an awful lot. It's of sixteen hours debate about what the what the design of the new phone should be. People were expecting a major redesign la last time round, and I uh, I. I wasn't, so I wasn't as surprised with the Apple for us. Let me explain why. From the first generation of iPhone to this iPhone 3G, that was an incremental upgrade. From the um, iPhone 3G to the iPhone 3GS, that was certainly an incremental upgrade. It's only been from the, the iPhone 3G to, 3GS to the iPhone 4 that we've had a significant upgrade. So so that would suggest that Apple is going to make a significant upgrade every every three years. A significant upgrade to the design that is. Um so so that would suggest that we're not on course this particular year to see a design change. From my personal opinion, I don't see why people are so obsessed with having a design change. I mean, yeah, it would be nice to have a bigger display. And some of this liquid metal um, ideas that are going around are kind of kind of interesting, and they look they look really durable. Certainly more durable than having glass. But I think, uh, as as regard this this taper design, I put. Personally, I think that that would be in impractical to to hold. So that's just my opinion on that one. Uh, uh, okay, next um, is the issue of the camera. Now, um, they they made quite a significant update to the camera from the iPhone 4 to the iPhone 4s. It was what what one of one of the major features they touted, they brought, they increased the megapixels, brought backside illuminated sensor, and uh, added 1080p video, and some of those other technologies. And the iPhone 4S camera is a good camera in the mobile space, but I think um, one of the major features they touted for the iPhone 4, certainly for the 4S, was, was that it, particularly for the for the video capture capabilities, they uh, compared it to the flip menu, which was a dedicated video recorder, and said that it um, uh, it, it rivaled the flip menu. I I think what they need to do with this uh, version is I personally think they need to make another update to the camera, and um, I could see them being the company to. Um, Bring the camera to to be in something that we say it's never going to replace your point and shoot. To be to be being something that could replace the point and shoot camera. That that would just so increase the value proposition for the iPhone, and I think would would fit with Apple's ethos in general. Uh, uh, Apple's about creating lifestyle devices, not not devices that going to only do one thing. Um. So, I mean, you can see that in the iPhone, just as a just a 
product in general when when it first started it had three main features not one but three it had a phone an iPod and a web browser so Apple likes to create multi-purpose devices that fit into our lives they don't like to create single purpose devices that we kind of compartmentalize so so that's just my personal opinion on that I'm hoping for an update to the camera my, my biggest hope was that they could they could really revolutionize phone cameras in the way that they they did um, with the with the iPhone 4 my my first thought this was a wild prediction is that they could in integrate some of that li Lytro technology Lytro, Lytro cameras have just started to come out in the wild but what Lytro is is it's instead of the camera lens focusing on our object at the time of capture and in editing you can um, it, it, it doesn't focus anywhere and when you edit the photo with the specialized editing software you choose where the focus point was so you didn't you don't actually do it when you take the photo I haven't actually seen any, any results from it so I don't know how good it is but I think that would be a really interesting cool thing to integrate and so I, I, I don't think we will have an update to, to the camera but I'd like one so we've got NFC keep the same design and an update to the camera the, la the last thing I want to talk about is 4G LTE now um, in this in this country we don't really have 4G LTE there's some trials on our range but in, in the US three of the four major carriers have uh, uh, um, announced 4G LTE now, people were expecting some form of 4G for the last um, phone, and it, uh, they didn't get it. I think um, it is it is quite possible because in 4G LTE, well, we just have to remember two things that uh, might not make it possible. Number number one, uh, Apple showed us with the iPhone 4. Uh, so that I like to create one streamlined device that makes it easier for manufacturing processes that they don't like to make um, different different phones and different iPads for different parts of the world. So I think um, that could that could present an issue because 4 G LTE is used in different frequencies throughout the world. So therefore, the radios would have to be different. And it might be difficult to uh, coordinate the world phone that they have now. They might have to create different versions. So for that reason, I don't think um, I don't think we're going to see 4G LTE. But I'd like to see 4G LTE. Maybe maybe then put um, some chips in there so that when 4G LTE does get switched on for the rest of the world we can have those lightning fast speed. So that's just my personal opinion on, on that. I'm not sure how how you guys feel. Um so uh, and oh yeah that was the other thing I was gonna say. To go along with that with that um for gel I would also think we need a bigger battery. Apple are masters of battery technology, uh, and they're the first, the first company that I really know of in my own personal experience that stay true to their claims of, of, of battery life. And um, uh, uh, and when it came to the to the iPad, that they, they they really delivered some unri unrivaled power. So I think even with a 4G LTE radio. Uh, Apple will only do that if they can keep the battery alive. Um, and I also think the uh, iPhone will be coming sometime in the uh, end of August or October.
end of sept end of August or September. I'm kind of leaning more towards September because historically we used to have an iPhone event then, and the iPhone and the iPad are kind of replace replacing the iPod. So they might actually introduce the new iPhone in in replace of the iPod event and just announce the iPods at the back end of that event. So that's that's just my personal opinion. Well, well, what do you guys think about what I've said? And what do you indeed think is me in the iPhone 5? I'd love to, I'd love to discuss this with you guys. So li leave your comments down below. I'd like to Thank you for watching this video guys, my website address is down below, tomdashwater.com, go and check out there for lot, lot, lots of cool interesting content and I'll see you guys in the next video, bye bye.